Thank you, friends. Thanks for coming out on this cool Saturday morning. We're going to talk a little bit about my work as a spiritual hypnotherapist. And then we'll be taking questions. If we have questions, we'll do a little Q&A period. Then we'll take a break. And then we will do a group past life and meet your spirit guide regression. So that's going to be the highlight and the fun part. Michael Newton, Journey of Souls, a very seminal book, came out in 1994. Dr. Newton kind of stumbled upon these ideas and these experiences. He was a psychologist in Los Angeles and he kind of stumbled upon these ideas of the afterlife and what goes on in the afterlife. You know, the old story that he writes about is there was a woman, a client that he had, very depressed. And he used all of his psychological techniques. It just couldn't really help her very much. So I think he remembered back in his education, and he was taught hypnosis. So he said, let's try hypnosis. Let's see what happens. So he hypnotizes this woman and says, let's go to a time when hey, you were happy. Maybe you had friends or loved ones around. And she, she became very full of light and very excited and very happy. And he's, he asked about this, and, and she says, you know, these are my friends in spirit. She was not in a body. This is a time when she was a spirit between her lifetimes. And so he scratched his head at that one and thought, what the heck is this? And so he started exploring that more and more. And over maybe 20, 30 years, he systematically explored and developed a technique that can take basically anyone into their existence between their, their lifetimes. And so, Destiny of Souls, another book came out in 2000, I believe, and then another book, Life Between Lives, sharing his techniques. And then around maybe 2001, I think maybe he was approached by a hypnosis organization or somehow he got together with an organization. He began teaching his method at some other organization's um, seminars. And then maybe two or three years of doing that, he decided to create his own um, organization, which he did. It was called the Society for Spiritual Regression. And then it was later renamed, renamed to the Newton Institute. And so the Newton Institute trains qualified hypnotherapists in Michael Newton's techniques. And so I was lucky enough in 2004 to attend a training in um, Studio City here in Southern California. They move the trainings around the country and around the world. They usually have maybe two, maybe three trainings a year. And so it just worked out for me. I was able to attend that training and wow, it was really life-changing for me. I think we spent about five days and I got to experience my first Life Between Lives session as a client. We had partners and I got to uh, give a session as well. I remember driving home from that seminar and just going on the freeway and looking around at the other cars and the people and thinking, oh my God, everyone here on the earth has this incredible soul history behind them this tapestry of, of lifetimes. And now I have the skills and the tools to help them remember that. So, 
that was the uh, epiphany for me, if you will. So let's talk a little bit about the Life Between Lives session and what happens in that type of session. Again, as I described, that is the main work that I do along with past life regression. I also do general hypnotherapy for people with particular issues. But those two are the, the biggies. And I kind of developed another session which is sort of in between those, which is a past life and spirit guide where we go to a past lifetime. Excuse me, and then we go through the life and then through the death and up into spirit and meet with a guide and perhaps chat with them for a few. People can bring a few questions. So that's what we're going to do today in our group session. We're going to do a past life and spirit guide group regression. Should be fun. I look forward to it. All right, so the life between lives. So we use hypnosis. There are many ways, as you know, to access our history, our soul's memories. There are psychics who can do this. There are mediums. Sometimes we just have spontaneous memories or dreams, these kinds of things, visions. But hypnosis is one way to help almost anyone to sort of put their conscious mind to the side and allow these soul memories to come through. It's pretty reliable that way. So, you know, the H word, hypnosis, there's a lot of baggage to do with that. And it's sort of a blessing and a curse for people in my profession, as you know, because of expectations because of Hollywood and movies and television shows which tend to over-dramatize the effects of hypnosis, right? So, so people are expecting to like go to the IMAX theater and see themselves moving across the screen. It may be like that. It's like that for some clients, but it may not be. So. You know, the bell curve of science, it kind of goes like that. Or some people go super deep. Everyone's different. Some people go super deep, and I can barely get them to speak. And then it's like they're talking from the grave. So those are fun. And then I have my sort of medium subjects, where they're still aware of who they are and what they're doing and you know, where they are, but they're opening another window into their past. And then I have the lighter subjects, which I tend to be a pretty light subject, where I'm pretty awake, pretty aware, and yet still able to access information from my, again, my, the tapestry of my soul's memories. So it's a pretty interesting thing. I have some people that become very emotional and I have the Kleenex, you know, the tissues that are waiting. I go through the tissues week by week. Um, and that's good. It's a cathartic experience for a lot of people. I mean, me, I tend to be pretty objective. And I'm usually just like, uh, in my own sessions as a client, I'm just like, oh, got eaten by a tiger again. Dang it. hate when that happens. So, you know, it's different for everyone. And there's a lot of definitions for hypnosis. My definition would sort of be hypnosis is a subtle way of opening the doors to your inner self. So it's not like, you know, it doesn't have to be like a hammer on your head that really knocking you out it can be very, very subtle. So let's be aware of that today. 
So in the Newton method of life between lives, he has a way of taking people back kind of slowly. So we'll go back through the childhood. We'll go back through actually adulthood and then childhood kind of step by step. We may stop at a place here or there, take a look. It's sort of uh, what they call memory warm-ups, just getting things going, moving backwards. Then we'll move all the way back into the womb, which is very interesting. The time before you're born, when you're gestating, you're growing inside of your mother. There's a lot of fascinating information to be found there. Like when do you, as a soul, actually come in to that fetus, you know? For some people, it's not until after it's even born, because they're like, I don't want to go through that mess. I don't want to see the blood and feel the squeezing and all that. I just came in like, you know, two days old. Okay. And I have other clients that come in like almost at conception and say, okay, it's dividing, four cells, eight cells, 16. Okay, it's, it's alive, it's going to be me. And so they might come in and then they move back out. People tend to come in and out of the womb. The soul energy comes in and out of the baby because it's not that exciting. Uh, for nine months, waiting for the, for the baby to grow and develop. There are lots of more exciting things to do in the universe. People have projects going on. People have work. People have study. They want to study for this life to come. Some people just fooling around like at, at the amusement park or something. Hey, I'm going to be going into this life. There's going to be challenges. I'm going to live it up here before I go in. So, it's very individual and very interesting. I would say that most of my clients come in around the third or fourth month of gestation. They want to check out the baby, make sure that it's developing okay, make sure that it's viable, that kind of thing. Some souls will do modifications to the fetus, to the infant. They will sort of do something similar to energy healing to make certain modifications. Maybe I need to make the brain a little more open or a little faster. Or there's a problem with the structure I need to arrange the bones or the tissues. Or there's maybe there's a problem with the heart. I need to reform that. So it's pretty amazing realizing what people can do to the child, this body that's going to be their vehicle in the world. Also in the womb we can we can already touching in with the mother What's going on with the mother? What's she feeling? What's she thinking? Is she happy? Does she want to have a child? Maybe she's not really too excited about that. Maybe she's worried. Maybe she's stressed. Does this affect you at all? What your mother is thinking and her energy, does this affect the baby? And sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. It's very interesting. Some people will say, well, of course it's affecting me. All that energy is affecting me. And then other people will say, no, I'm shielded from that. I'm just observing her. In fact, some people will send their mother, you know, healing vibes or love or light. Yeah, she's really stressed. I'm trying to calm her down because... <clears throat> The more calm I can make her feel, the just more pleasant it is for me to be here. So, very, very interesting, the information we can learn there. So then from the womb, we'll sort of leapfrog, kind of over the interlife, 
into another human lifetime. That's just part of Dr. Newton's method. So we go, we go and visit a past life. We'll explore the past life. It's interesting because when we do a past life regression, we might drop in at any point along that timeline, you know, from birth to death, or even after, or even a little before. So we call, I've uh, sort of came up with the term, the drop-in point for that life. So, okay, here we are in another lifetime. Is it daytime or nighttime? How old are you? What's going on? I'm 36, I'm walking down the road. So we kind of dropped in in the middle, maybe. So then we'll go back, I like to go back and explore the childhood, maybe, of the life. I like to understand if they had a family, if they had a mother, a father, what kind of home they may have come from. And then we'll work our way through some significant moments of the life. Or maybe there was a time when you left home, maybe there was a time when you got married, maybe there was a time when you birthed a child and became a mother or a father. Maybe there was a time when your parents passed away. And then we'll go through that type of thing. So we'll go all the way through toward the end of the life, maybe to the very last day. So last day, be there now. Where are you? What's happening? And so they'll report uh, most deaths. Most people, it's just they're old and they don't feel well and they're very tired and they're lying down and someone's, you know, mopping their brow and giving them soup and but they can realize that they're on their way out. Occasionally we'll get those exciting deaths of, you know, I got run over by a horse or, you know, eaten by a wolf or, <laughs> you know, war. People die in wars, unfortunately. That kind of thing. So, yeah. It's pretty fascinating to go through, but I hope it's comforting to you to realize that most deaths seem to be sort of natural causes, old age, that type of thing. So we'll go through that death. Then what? We're going to rise up out of that body. We're going to make the transition from the human earthly life into the spiritual reality. We're going to drop away that earthly life, sort of like, you know when you come home at the end of a long day, you just drop your coat on the ground, ah. We're going to do that with the body and the lifetime. We're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. We're going to rise up, rising, 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 ascending, ascending moving through layers and levels of dimensions. We're crossing over. We're shifting our frequency into the spiritual frequencies. We're leaving the density of the earth behind and we're rising up, up, up. And so, now what? What's going to happen? What's going to happen next? Where do we go? I started telling people, because it just came to me, this isn't Newton's thing, but, you know, now you can do whatever you want to do. You can go wherever you want to do, and at the speed of thought, you can be there. There are things to do, there are places to go, there are people to see, or if you just want to sit under a tree for a thousand years, that's your choice. You can do whatever you want. And it's absolutely true. We can do whatever we want. We have total free will. And now we're out of the body. That's even magnified. We can really do what we want. And so I kind of try to leave it open for people. Instead of steering them here or there, I try to leave it open for, for my one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, you can do whatever you want. 
And some people will just say, I'd like to do nothing for a while. Like, that sounds good. I'm going to sit here and be quiet. Well, you do nothing for a while. So they're just resting. What they're really doing is re acclimatizing to the spiritual vibrations. They've been in this struggle, in this earthly life. They need to let go of that and remember what it's like to be, <clears throat> excuse me, remember what it's like to be in this, you know, in the light. There's this beautiful light of heaven that moves through us and re-energizes us, starts to restore our energy. So one thing that often happens is people will meet up with a spirit guide. We all have spiritual guides. These are teachers, souls, who have agreed to help us out, kind of like a big brother or big sister or a guardian angel. Often we have a primary spirit guide, one person who was really committed, who was assigned to us and said, I'm going to help you through this for the next 90 eons or however long it's going to take to get you to that next level. And so in our session, sitting down maybe, talking with this very wise and loving person, it's just a beautiful introduction to the spirit world. There tends to be a sense of unconditional love and acceptance. There tends to be a, sometimes they will enfold the person in their sort of wings and their energy. And it just makes you feel so much better. It makes you feel loved and full and restored. So in our session, I will try to utilize this time by talking with the spirit guide. I will talk to the spirit guide directly. We'll set it up where I say, I'm going to speak to your guide directly. I'm going to ask him or her to respond in your mind or even through your voice as if channeling them. So we're going to kind of cut out the middleman of you. You don't have to think about it too much, hopefully. We're going to have a dialogue with your spirit guide. So I'll start asking questions. Well, what about that lifetime, that past lifetime that we lived? What was that all about? What was the purpose of that life? What were they trying to do? And why were we shown, out of all the lives they've lived, why were we shown that one? What does that have to do with the current life? and the current situation. So there'll always be some sort of a meeting point. It'll always mesh. Because in the past life part, I'll simply request that we go to a past life that has a meaningful connection to the current lifetime. I don't know how that works, but I'm glad that it does. And so we'll talk to the spirit guide about this. And then we'll ask them, you know, what was the purpose of the past life? What were they trying to do? What was the soul doing there? What were they trying to learn? They will also talk about the current life. Well, what about the current life? What's the purpose now? What are we trying to do? And so we'll have all these questions we can talk to the spirit guides about. Then I like to use the spirit guide as sort of a tour guide like uh, as if we're going through Disneyland of the afterlife. I'll ask the spirit guide, well, what would you like them to experience next? <clears throat> and there are several places and experiences that Newton has found. And new ones that we find all the time that Michael Newton didn't even know about. So one of the really nice places to go is to a place of healing a place of restoring your soul. Living an earth lifetime can leave you a little 
chipped up and beaten up. Um, even your soul energy needs to be restored to your full capacity. Kind of like plugging in your electric car or you know your phone, right? You need to get it up to 100%. And so this restoration or healing can take many, many forms. Very amazing the way we, in our human way, sort of put a face on what's really happening just in an energetic way. So people will perceive like, it's a temple of healing and I go in and I lay on this table and there are beings that are shining lights on me. But people describe, I'm going to a waterfall outside and I just stand under the waterfall and it, you know, it restores me, it, it fills me with energy and love and power. Just amazing. Um, I've had people just wherever they are, wherever they happen to be as a spirit, have healers come to them. Well, they've just come to me. And there's, they're all around me. And they're shining this divine energy on me. And so, you know, it fills you up and gets you ready to go through the next steps in the spirit world. So again, as I explained, you can go wherever you want. One place that people, and one thing they like to do, is reunite with their soul group. We have, in spirit, we have groups, just like we have families on earth. We have soul groups that we play with and learn with in spirit. And we also come down together and incarnate sometimes um, in different roles. Maybe there's a group and we're working on a particular item. Uh, how to have more unconditional love. So you get your friend and you say, hey, I want you to come down to this life with me and I want you to uh, challenge me. Give me a hard time about some stuff. Maybe even betray me and stab me in the back. I want to see if I can find it in myself to forgive you and work, you know. If, if what, we've, what we learn in spirit, if I can bring that through in the human sense. You know, because when we incarnate, we generally, as if we take a drink of forgetfulness, we generally forget this whole spirit stuff because we want to focus on this human life. We want to focus on this human life. We forget where we came from and who we really are. And that probably explains a lot in our world. But, yeah, and so, you know, we get with our friends and we make plans. Have you ever gotten together with your friends and planned like a road trip or something like that? Kind of similar to that. So, you know, when when we're young, in the U.S. here, we have elementary school, maybe junior high school, or middle school, and then high school. When we're in, say, third grade, we have one homeroom, one teacher. As we grow and develop, we'll have more classes when we go to junior high and high school. Maybe we'll have six classes. So I find it's the same thing in spirit. As over time we grow and develop and develop more interests, we develop other groups. So we might have an interest group. These are artists. Or this group is explorers. Or this class or group is teachers. Or learning to be guides. So we can develop many different groups as we go. And so we can touch in with our sort of homeroom, you know, our closest family. We can touch in with our working groups, our interest groups. Very cool. And then sometimes we can also recognize, let's say you go to a group of people who are artists or healers. 
And then I'll recognize some friends from my life today. Oh, you're, you're in that healing group with me. Wow, very cool. So it's a fun thing we can do in these sessions is understand who in our life today we are connected with in spirit in a very intimate way. So another experience we can have in the Life Between Lives session is visiting what Newton called the Council of Elders. These are very wise, compassionate, exalted beings, maybe a few steps above a spirit guide. These beings will assemble almost like a panel and will come before this panel and will talk to them. There may be three of them, there may be five or seven or even nine. I've noticed depending on our maybe level of development or our number of interests, the more developed we are or the more interest we have, we'll tend to have more elders come to our meeting. So in our session, we can talk to these elders. I can dialogue with them. How is she doing as a soul? Is she developing? Is she on the right track? What are her strengths? What are her weaknesses? What does she need to work on in this life right now? What should she focus on? These kinds of things. And so, also have the, bring, have the client bring in a list of questions. And hopefully if we meet with a council of wise ones, we can get her questions addressed. Mm. It kind of leads me to maybe backtracking a little bit. Why do people even come to these sessions? There are lots of reasons. I get a lot of clients who are in a crisis or a fork in the road. Maybe there's a decision they have to make or maybe they're just stuck, stuck in the mud. They just don't know where to go or what to do next. So I'd say people are mainly looking for guidance and direction in their life. Who am I and what am I supposed to be doing? Um, you know, life purpose, guidance and direction. Another thing people are looking for is, well, let's say help with issues. I have this relationship with my son. It's just not going well. I don't know what to do. What should I be doing for him? So, or, you know, a spouse or anything like that. We can look at relationships. We can look at career career and um, you know finances and that kind of thing what am what am I supposed to be doing I I'm working this job but you know it's not really fulfilling me the way that I wish I I really want to be an architect or something like that so we can look at those kinds of things sometimes people have health issues that they want to explore you know I've got this thing and it's just dragging me down is there anything anybody can do up here to help me out. At least uh, maybe something I can learn about. So these are mainly the uh, reasons people come to these sessions. And in the council or with the spirit guides, we can talk about these things, get them some guidance, bring some light down into their human life, bring some, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel There are places in spirit you might know as the Akashic Records. Everything is recorded. Every thought, every word, every deed, every circumstance, every situation, every dream. It's all recorded. And in the Life Between Lives session, we can go and access this. We might call it a library or a hall of records, and so we can go into this vast area, this amazing place. 
Uh, people describe it as just endless corridors that go down like to infinity. And books or videos or information, scrolls, information in many different forms. And so it's something fun that we can, we can explore. Maybe they want to look at past lives. Maybe they were, I've had a few people who are scientists or inventors. They want to consult the Hall of Records to get some information about uh, an invention. Get some scientific, maybe we can make a breakthrough. Who knows? It's all, it's all there. It's all available to us. Another thing I'd like to talk about is looking at past lives and that many of us do have lives in other worlds besides the earth. The universe is a big place, right? It's very large. The Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy, has something like 200 billion stars. And there are billions of galaxies. It's big. And so there are many places to go. Um, the Earth is a beautiful gem. I love it. It's gorgeous. But there are many, many places to go. And so sometimes in our sessions we'll explore People have lives in other places. I get a lot of people coming to me and they just feel they're not at home on the earth. They feel different than everyone else. A lot of people who are very sensitive maybe come from worlds that are a little milder than earth. Earth can be a bit of a tough neighborhood sometimes, right? So, a lot of challenges down here. It's not for the weak. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, and so, you know, we'll explore it. What, what was your life like there? I had someone very recently uh, that we explored this last week, and wow, I mean, her other existence is just, just gorgeous. You know, but why are you here in the earth now? Well, I, I wanted to, uh, I want to help this place to rise up. I've had people tell me that uh, right now, in our Earth history, is sort of a watershed moment. It's an opportunity for us to raise the Earth to a higher level. And there are beings from all over the universe who have flocked here in human bodies. They have incarnated as us. I mean, many of us here have lived in other worlds. But they've all come here. Uh, Earth is like the Las Vegas of the universe right now. It's just, it's really happening. There's a lot going on. It's very exciting. And they want to help. So, it's very, very cool. There's a lot going on. Yeah, we have a lot going on. We think, well, you know, we're born and we identify with this body and this life. And it's just everything. And if I stub my toe, oh my God, you know, it's so, such a big thing. Well... You know, in the scheme of things, we only bring a portion of ourself into any one life. Other fragments of ourself are off doing other things. We have lots going on. We have projects and explorations and jobs and things that we're doing. Living an earth life is important and it's precious. And every moment is precious. Every life is precious and yet it's a grain of sand, you know, in the universe. Another very important thing in the Life Between Lives session is sometimes people want to reunite with a loved one who has crossed over. Part of living is dying, and we all lose people that we love. It's a sad part of being alive. It's losing those that we are close to. And so we wonder, you know, what, what happens to them? Their body's there, and it, you know, we, we bury it or burn it or do whatever we do. Do they still exist? This is something that we all wonder. And so in these sessions, sometimes we can visit with the crossed over loved ones. 
maybe it's you know grandma or father or maybe it's a child that you've lost and so it's so heartbreaking sometimes it's so heartbreaking but in the sessions we can go and visit with these loved ones we can talk with them and I can ask them questions how are you feeling now well I'm great all that stuff you know I've I've been through the houses of healing and I feel much better and I'm starting to work with other people I'll ask them what are you doing in spirit how are you spending your time well you know I have a job I, I work with these souls who have newly crossed over and they help them adjust or maybe I'm working with the healers because I'm I'm really a healer too or maybe they're taking a vacation or a rest you know I'm going on a trip I'm going on the grand tour of the planets you know of, of the galaxies and I'm gonna explore for a while it's great and so this just tends to be very comforting for the client the person who is left behind knowing that their loved one still exists they're still alive they have interests and activities and they also check in with you when you're on the earth your loved one will observe you sometimes give us signs turning a light on or off um, knocking over a, you know a statue or something they will give us signs that you know you find a letter that they wrote these types of things so it's very cool very comforting for people to know that their loved ones do still exist and they will see them again and towards the end of the session we'll sometimes visit a or revisit the time of the planning for the current lifetime so when I was planning to be me what was going on it's sort of a conference table and I have a few guides and maybe a few soul friends and we're we're planning out my life and so this is the time to find out what the heck was I gonna do in this life anyway because I've I've forgotten so what what did I want to do what was I planning so we can we can get that information for the client have them remember you know what they wanted to accomplish it's a very cool and so there are other experiences in the life between lives session that again have not been written about because everyone's different everyone has different you know interests and different experiences I've had a couple pretty fascinating clients one of them that comes to mind is a fellow and it's in one of uh, Rich Martini's books this fellow that we're in a past life and somehow he he connects with the spirit of the earth and so we sort of jump on that and we sort of dialogue with the soul of the earth or you know whatever you want to call that and what is the earth all about how did it get here uh, you know who who started this place what do you do how are we doing as humans on the earth so this is a fascinating stuff I had another woman recently who she was able to connect with her sort of soul's mother or this other soul who nurtured her and cared for her as she was just created as a soul so this wise maternal older soul and we dialogued with her for for quite a while so just fascinating I have one other client maybe I want to mention this was a fellow who had he had dreams of sort of falling through the sky and colors and bursts and and he was also fascinated with airplanes and in flight and he just had a feeling this had something to do with the past life and so we explored that and well of course we find that he's a world world war 2 pilot he's a co-pilot 
He's in a plane flying over Europe. And their plane is hit by ground fire, flak. The pilot's head is blown off. So he, as the co-pilot, needs to jump into this plane that is just damaged beyond, you know, help. He's trying to hold. He has like four other guys. Besides the pilot who's now gone, he has four other guys that he's, he feels responsible for. And he's trying to pull the plane up and he just can't. And so the guys that can, they eject. And he actually is falling through the sky in his past life. Uh, but he has a parachute. He makes it safely down to earth. But he lands in a forest. It's very cold. He's hiding. He's in enemy territory. He's hiding in a very cold place. He ends up freezing to death that night. And so we also find that none of his other friends made it out alive. None of them survived. And so, you know, we wonder, what's this all about? Why was this coming back to him? Why was he having visions of falling through the sky? Why is he obsessed with airplanes? Why does this have sort of a hold on him? It's keeping him from moving forward. And so, what I sort of realized and what we found was that he, I believe he was holding a guilt that he wasn't able to save everybody. And so, hopefully our sessions helped him to overcome that. I wrote to him recently asking if I could tell his story today, and he said, sure. And he also said that doing those sessions helped me understand that my soul continues on, and that's the most important thing. So there's a postscript to this story, which is the coolest part. After he left, I went outside my office uh, to check my mail. We have mailboxes outside in this sort of patio. So I walk outside, and I'm checking the mail. I look up, I happen to see there's a red-tailed hawk you know, the hawks that we have hovering here in Southern California. This is a beautiful hawk, and I was like, wow, that's great. It's kind of like my totem animal, because they don't even flap. They just ride the thermals. Very cool. And then I see this, the second hawk come. I'm like, wow, that's cool. I know sometimes they hunt in mating pairs. So I was like, wow, just watching them. Kind of checking my mail, and then a third hawk comes. I'm like, wow, I don't think I've, maybe that's their baby, you know, something, I don't know, it looked a little smaller. Okay, and then a fourth and a fifth hawk. I've never seen five hawks wheeling around in the sky over my head. And so I think back to that crew of that plane, and I'm thinking, okay, What's this all about? It's sort of a sign. It's sort of a salute to that gentleman who did his best to save these people. So, I think I'll pretty much end my talk there. A couple other announcements I just wanted to make. Very exciting. Tomorrow, December 8th, 2019, the Newton Institute coming out with a brand new book, Wisdom of Souls. This is something that about two dozen of the Newton Institute members have contributed to and worked on. All kinds of these stories and information about these Life Between Lives sessions. I think it would be a very interesting and fascinating read for people who are into this kind of thing. So that will be available on Amazon and wherever you get great books. I also wanted to mention my friend, Rich Martini. He's in the back of the room here today. He's done a lot of work with me and Jennifer Schaefer and lots of other people to promote the understanding 
of our afterlife and our eternal nature. I just want to remind you, he has all kinds of books. Flip Side, It's a Wonderful Afterlife, Hacking the Afterlife. His books with Jennifer, Backstage Pass to the Afterlife. Very fun, very fascinating. A warm, friendly, loving man, a good friend of mine. Just wanted to remind you about him. This is my website. If you want to contact me, lightbetweenlives.com. Be happy to answer any questions you have online. Just email me and let me know. So we're going to take some questions and answers now. Before we do that, I want to thank you for sitting and sharing this time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.